channel. So this is a video that I've been wanting to make for quite a long time and that is about a little something called resource guarding. Ever since we got Milton he's always had some sort of issue with resource guarding and before I get into the specifics of it I just wanted to give you a little bit of an insight as to what resource guarding is for someone who has never heard of the term before aka me because I was a brand new owner didn't know much about dog training and especially not dog behavior. So resource guarding in its essence is a completely natural thing that dogs do. It's instinctual in them. Your dog's not broken if they're a resource guarder. It is when they guard via growling or sitting by something or snapping, they guard a resource that they deem as valuable. And this most commonly takes shape with food, objects, and people but realistically they could guard anything that they think is valuable. And since resource guarding is a natural behavior, it's something that you have to train through behavior modification training, basically showing them that for whatever object it is that they find valuable, that you're not gonna take it away, that you are safe to be around, that you are their friend, not their enemy. And the thing with resource guarding is that it can become really problematic if you don't deal with it in the right way and soon enough. Ideally, you want to start training it when they're a puppy and before they even show any signs of resource guarding, which is something I know for the future. And so the purpose of this video is to share with you our journey with resource guarding and a few of the things we did that I think for the most part helped bring his guardian down to a manageable level where we no longer are living in fear of him hurting us or biting at us. But I did just want to preface before I get into it that resource guarding is a really unique journey for every dog and every owner. So what I did might not work for you and it's really best if you have a dog showing any signs of resource guarding that you consult a canine behaviorist who can help you or a trainer because this is really not something that you should handle on your own and we didn't either. So as I mentioned, Milton has pretty much been guarding ever since he was a puppy when we got him around 10 weeks old. And I did say it's instinctual, but there are certain things in a puppy's upbringing that can determine whether or not they will have guardian behavior and just some really innocent choices that you might make as an owner that could cause them to start guarding things. Of course, there could have been something in the way he was raised with his breeder that caused it, but we don't know that. So I'm not gonna guess anything and I'm just gonna tell you some of the things we noticed. So probably the first main thing that I can recollect is that when he was a puppy, whether we were playing with a toy or a chew or his food bowl, we would take objects away from him without offering a trade. And really all this means is that whenever you take away something from them, you give them something in return. For instance, when we would give him bully sticks, which is one of the biggest things he started guarding, we would just take it. We wouldn't, you know, give him a treat in return or another toy or chew, we just took it away. And I think doing that repeated amounts of times, of course we didn't know it was an issue, caused him to realize, well, I'm just gonna lose it and I'm not gonna get anything back. So maybe he started guarding them. The second thing that we did or neglected to do rather that I think contributed to his resource guarding was that we neglected to teach him leave it and drop it in a really effective way. We introduced leave it a bit. We never introduced drop it until you know pretty later on after his guarding had progressed. But those are pretty much the bread and butter of behavior modification training for resource guarding. And those are things you can teach your puppy from the beginning. And those naturally, I'm sure as you can see, work really well with resource guarding because if your dog gets an object of high value that they're not supposed to have, you can tell them to drop it and they'll leave it alone. Or on the flip side, if they want to go after something that they could potentially guard, 
you tell them leave it and they'll ignore it. So by not teaching either of those things, it also then contributed to the idea that if I find a forbidden object on the floor, then I have to guard it because I'm not supposed to have it. It's not good that I have it and they're just gonna take it away from me. The next part of this more so plays into the severity of his guarding behavior. And I've done a lot of reading and research that basically indicates that there's a scale of guarding behavior. And some of the earliest signs are ones you might not even notice. At the very top of like minor guarding behavior, we have sitting by an object, stopping chewing it whenever a person walks by, looking at you, a slight freeze in the body position, the way the ears are done. Those are all very minor indications that your dog might be guarding something. But the issue is if you ignore these top ones, then they realize that they don't work. Then they might move to growling from a distance. And that's really where a lot of people start to notice that their dog is guarding something is when they're growling at them. If a human ignores that, then it progresses to snapping and then biting, which is the worst one. And so as I indicated, after doing a few months of training and realizing that we really couldn't get anywhere, we realized that we needed some help. And so we brought in a trainer to help us out. So we trained with her, I believe for about two months and we met every single week for an hour and worked on different things, which I will share with you right now. The first tool for resource guarding training is drop it. This basically means that when you say drop it to a dog, whatever they have in their mouth, they'll drop. We started doing this training by playing tug with him and whenever he dropped the object by himself, saying drop and then marking that with a reward. After he understood that, then we progressed to telling him drop when he still had the object in his mouth and rewarding when he dropped it. And after we nailed down that basic concept, we progressed it to some higher value objects like socks and tissues. The second tool of the resource guarding training that we did was leave it. So kind of in the same vein, we started this by telling him to leave objects that he had absolutely no interest in, like a cup on the floor or just really random objects, a TV remote. So we would put it down, say leave it, and then start walking away from the object, encouraging him to follow us. The instant he turned away from the object and started to follow me, I marked yes and threw a bunch of treats on the floor in the direction away from the object itself. And we did this a couple times and then started adding in some of the more higher value objects he would try to get, like paper, which he loved to shred. The third tool of the resource guarding training that we did was trade. The key here is that the trade at the beginning needs to be of higher value than the object that he is taking away. And so how we did this was by feeding his meal in small increments. So we would drop about five pieces of kibble into his food bowl and then set it down. He would eat it. And then when it was empty, I would present him the treat, usually cheese or hot dog, and say trade, pick up the food bowl, the empty food bowl, then give him the cheese and walk away. And then I would refill the bowl with five more pieces of kibble set it back down and do the trade process over and over again. So I was trading with an empty food bowl for a piece of cheese or hot dog. So the trade in this instance was better than what he was giving up. And so then this leads into the fourth tool of our resource guarding training, which was feeding in increments. I kind of explained how it works, but the whole psychology of it is that you're showing them that you're a giver. So by feeding in small increments, they're realizing that for each time they finish their bowl, you give them more. You're not taking any way, anything away, you're just giving them more. And the element of this that I didn't mention earlier was as he was eating the five pieces of kibble in his bowl, I would walk up, put my hand in his bowl, drop a piece of chicken, walk away, and then you know just periodically walk up and drop the chicken or cheese in his bowl. So by adding a higher value food into the bowl with his lower value object, he then realized that someone walking up to my bowl is also not a bad thing because I'm not gonna get it taken away. In fact, they're gonna give me something good. The fifth tool of our resource guardian training was teaching mill and recall, which in the training word is usually come. And to train come, you start by saying come 
throwing food down, saying come, throwing food down, with no distance between you and your dog. So they are starting to associate the word come with a bunch of treats being thrown on the floor. And once they understand this, then you step back a couple feet, say Milton or whatever your dog's name is, clap, be super excited for them. When they start walking towards you, say come, and then when they get to you, throw the treats down. And you just continue to practice this in different levels of distraction and distance. So inside from a greater distance, outside from a shorter distance, outside from a greater distance, etc. And you start when you're not calling them away from anything. You just randomly do it. A lot of times you can just use come to call them away from the object of the guarding. And that works really well if you're not at the point in your training yet where you can comfortably do leave it or drop it without them reacting. And the sixth main tool of resource guarding training is the type of treats that you have. So with resource guarding training, it's very important that you have really good, yummy, high value treats to give your dog. So this is typically some sort of meat like chicken or steak or beef. And so I like to get hot dogs for high value and then I cut them into small pieces like this. And once again, they're really easy to store and just pull out when you need. And so I would just always have this container on hand with me when doing training. And I would alternate between using usually the mid and the high value trees for resource guarding. So for things like come, leave it and drop it, I would pretty much always use high value or I would do a mixture of mid and high value. And in addition to hot dog, I also would boil chicken sometimes and just shred it. And then that was another good, easy high value treat to use. And I just want to finish the video by saying that if your dog is a resource guarder, more than anything, I want this video to show you that you're not alone in that. And if you feel like you made some mistakes along the way, so did we. You are not a bad person and your dog is not a bad dog if they're a resource guarder. It's just a fact of owning a dog and some of them have this issue and some of them don't. So I hope that this video was helpful to you in introducing some of the ways that you can help train resource guarding and prevent it in the first place with your dog. As always, please talk to a trainer or a vet before going on any sort of behavior modification plan just to keep yourself safe and your dog safe in the process. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe for more dog owner lifestyle content with Maddie and Milton. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.